13 Sentinels and why it's such a great game for learning Japanese with. What is 13 Sentinels? Well, 13 Sentinels is a kind of side-scrolling, real-time strategy, timey-wimey, time-travel, sci-fi, anime, school, <laughs> mystery. It's incredibly interesting, packed full of surprising twists and turns, lots and lots of characters, lots and lots of different settings, amazing artwork, amazing music, and all round a really great game for learning Japanese with. <laughs> What kind of learner will this game appeal to? Well, this game obviously is a sci-fi game, so if you have any kind of interest in time travel, mech, um, you know, futuristic things, um, any kind of technology, anything like that, then it's already going to be really interesting for you. It also has a fair amount of kind of daily life um, because it's told through the narrative of 13 different school kids. So you see lots of different backgrounds, lots of different personalities, lots of different stories, uh, different, you know, family upbringings, things like that. So um, a lot of interesting language. So if any of that sounds interesting, then this might be the game for you. Hiyorita. What kind of language will you learn? Well, obviously this game is a sci-fi game, so you'll learn a lot of sci-fi terms. However, don't let that put you off, okay? Unlike some games which are too heavy in you know the sci-fi style and that's all it is, uh, for example like Xenogears or maybe even Metal Gear Solid, this game does have sci-fi language but it also has a lot of really really useful conversational language. While it does have some sci-fi terms and some time travel terms, it also has a lot of really useful day-to-day -day type things like greetings and you know um, you know you eat meals together just like you saw in Boku no Natsuyasumi because it's set in um, for the most part Japan, so you do see Japanese life. You do see a lot of words for Japanese buildings, Japanese things, especially based around school, um, but as well as based around kind of society. How does the language appear in the game? Now, this is one of the game's strongest points, the way the language appears. So unlike a traditional game where, you know, the language really only appears in the text box at the bottom of the screen and that's it, this game is completely different. This game is one of, if not the best games in the way that it is presented uh, for a language learner. So as you can see, um, no more of the boring subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Now we actually have this really interesting, nice sized text in front of the character's head, sometimes on top, kind of like thought bubble type things. Um, very nice visually to look at, very clear for a language learner to look at, as well as having all of the story lines in the entire game are voice acted. So there is a lot of voice acting to go through. So you can see this is how the text is um, shown, but it's more than that. So you can also have a look at every single conversation in the story mode. You can have a look at all of the conversations, all of the scenes, all the dialogue, everything, just by pressing the center button on your PlayStation 4 controller, and you can bring up this amazing log of all of the scenes conversation. So if you don't understand something, or if you want to go re-listen to something, or if you want to see the reading of something, just listen to it, you can go back to that line, press circle and replay uh, the audio for that line. So absolutely incredible there as well, but that's not only it. Because this game isn't told in a linear fashion, because this game is not in a kind of A to B, it kind of goes all around the place, different perspectives, different times, um, the story is all over. You get to see the language from different perspectives. So it's not just the story being told once and then move on. You get to go back and actually see it again from a different perspective. So you get this review of the language, but it's not boring because you get to see it in different ways, different contexts and all that kind of stuff. Now, that's not only the way the language appears. While you're playing the story mode, you can actually press the triangle button and you enter this kind of inner thoughts mode and you can see all the clouds around. Now, in this mode, you can think about 
you know, the certain current situation. Perhaps you're talking to a character? Well, you can have your thoughts about that character and you can see what the character thinks. So as you highlight over the selection, it actually, the character kind of says in a kind of internal monologue, kind of internal dialogue, the character says the title. So you get that review of the language, you get to hear it again, but then also you get to hear the breakdown of the character's thoughts. You get to see what the character thinks about a certain topic and that gives you more language review so not only do you get to see the language in the story but then you even get to think about it and go back and see it again more review it's voice acted so easy uh, to get review for now all of the text dialogue in this game you can actually set in the options for press to continue just like a Final Fantasy game, for example. So it doesn't have to go past really quickly like a movie. You can go at your own pace. There is language as well in the battle scenes, although the language isn't as important and it's also much harder to access. Sometimes there's strange fonts, but the good news is, is that the language and the battles aren't that important. It's really more just kill this enemy, defend this point attack. <laughs> now one last place that the language appears and that is the kind of mystery archive logs. As you progress through the story, as you kind of unlock different sections of the game, you actually unlock mysteries to do with the story, you unlock information to do with the story, and so you can actually go through this list and read this, kind of like a Pokedex. So it also has this um, positive side like a Pokemon game where as you progress you unlock these little archive pieces of information um, that you can read and learn about. <laughs> Now, why is this game good for a Japanese learner? Well, if you think about all of the points that I just mentioned, how the language appears, that is this game's strongest point. And this is why this game is good for a language learner. Because unlike normal games where you play, you know, one scene, the opening, and it's like three hours and you have to just oh, get through it. And, oh, come on, get through it. And then you have a whole bunch of open world and it's just battle, 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 battle. And you're trying to get to that next cutscene. Instead of that kind of style, like you might have in like a Final Fantasy or lots of RPGs, this game is perfectly structured for a language learner. Because this story is told in a non-linear fashion, think of kind of like a Memento uh, movie where the beginning isn't the beginning. <laughs> you are told the story throughout different sections throughout history and from different characters' perspectives. It's very timey-wimey and all over the place. This is actually a really good thing for a language learner. Because this story is based around 13 characters, then you have 13 different perspectives. This often has overlap because it's one story being told with these 13 characters. This means that you see certain scenes again but with a little bit more information, a little bit more of the mystery unraveled from a different character's perspective. This is great for a language learner because this means that you get the Anki review inside the game. You don't have to go off and review it because the game actually, the way it's structured is it will review it as you play. Not only that, the game is voice acted. So of course, that's an amazing thing. You have a log, that's an amazing thing. If you have a log, then this game is already amazing for you because at any point in time, you can go back and re-study, re-have a look, re-check, re-listen to any line in the story. But you can even go back to any point in the game, any point in the game, you actually have a kind of a log, uh, a record of all of the different parts in the timeline that you've unlocked, every part in the timeline that you've watched, and you can go back to any point in time and you can replay it if you want. So at any point, if you, for example, maybe you were a low level in the beginning, but you've been playing for a while and you've really improved your Japanese, you can go back into the earlier parts of the game later and actually replay it and re-see the story. And it's not just for fun, that's how the game is designed. It wants you to time travel, go backwards and forwards, learn more about the mystery that's slowly being told bit by bit. So by its very structure, this game is one of the best games. By the way it presents the language, it's absolutely perfect for a Japanese language learner. What level learner is this best for? Now, this is a tricky question because while it is true that there is quite a bit of sci-fi language, that's not something that should hold you back from playing. The reason why is because 
This may very well be the very best game for language learners in terms of how the language is presented. So because it's not just all sci-fi, you get lots of language, lots of daily life conversation, lots of, you know, just normal character conversation. Because of the way that the language is presented to you, I would almost recommend this game for almost anyone who is interested into getting into playing a game uh, and learning Japanese with. Because even if you are a complete beginner, even if you take sentences really slow, the way the story is told is actually going to benefit you. Because unlike Final Fantasy, we have to go through hours and hours of footage and it takes you so long to go through each and every cutscene, this game is told very small bit by bit. You might see like five minutes of one character and then move on to a completely different character in a completely different time. <laughs> because the way the story is told, how it's not in a linear fashion, you get small little bursts of interesting scenes, it's always changing. It's never boring because you see a small little section of one character in a completely different setting and then you move on to a different character, a different setting. Not only that, but you can choose what characters you want to focus on. After the prologue of the game, you can actually choose which character that you want to focus on. There's 13 different characters and you can kind of bit by bit unlock the story for each as you please in whatever order that you want. And then as you slowly unlock that, more paths get unlocked to you and you can unravel more of that mystery. So you can always feel accomplished. You can just play a little bit, even if you're really low level, and you can just play just a little bit, try your best, replay the audio, right? And you can actually improve and then stop. And then the next day, play another five minutes. Or if you're a really high level learner, you can just play and play and play and play and play and unlock the mystery. It's perfect for both sides. So don't let the sci-fi language kind of scare you off. This game is great for learners of all levels. Kaiko-chan wa... What resources are available for this game? Well, unlike a Final Fantasy that has the game scripts online, for example, as far as I know, this game does not have its script available online. No one's gone and written it all down. However, you don't need it. This is actually, no joke, one of the very best games of all video games. <laughs> for you and your language study. And the reason why is you don't need these resources. You don't need a list of, of all of the game scripts because it's in the game. <laughs> At any point in the game, you can go back to any point in the story that you want and replay it. And because the cutscenes themselves, each scene is only very short, it never feels like you have to watch an hour or 30 minutes of one scene. They're usually only like five to 10 minutes each you know, point in time, each section of the story. So you can go back and replay any one you want. Then you can skip through, then you can go read the log, replay the audio. It's absolutely fantastic. You don't need resources for this game because it's so perfect in the way that it's presented. The only thing that could make this game better is if it had Furigana, but honestly, because most of the lines are all voice acted, it's actually really good for you to practice your listening, to just replay the audio in the log and go, ah, that's what it said and then search the word that way. That way you can actually practice your listening as well as your reading. Why do I personally recommend this game? Well, aside from the obvious things where this game is absolutely beautiful, an amazing soundtrack, really interesting story and setting, futuristic time travel, timey-wimey, mystery type stuff, but it's also seriously one of the very best games to learn Japanese with. Where Boku no Natsuyasumi is really good because the setting of the game is very realistic, right? Very natural language. In here, the way the language is presented is almost bar none the very best. It is absolutely incredible the way that the language is presented for you as a language learner because it's just so accessible. Like really, any point in time, you can go back and replay a scene, replay the audio, go back through the chat logs, re <laughs> whatever you want. But also the way that you think about things and then you have to analyze the scene, that helps review and reinforce the language that you've already learned. For example, you might have a scene where they're talking about, you know, uh, an explosion that happened and you learn the word for explosion, right? Well, as you see that in the scene, you'll come across that word. And then as you think, 
about the scene in order to unravel more of the mystery, you will see that word again, reinforcing that word, reviewing that word. And then you might even see this scene again from a different character's perspective, further reinforcing the word. So you're constantly getting review, but you're also constantly getting new scenes and new little bits of the mystery. And that is one of the main reasons why it's such a great game. It's a mystery game because when you just play like a history game where it's like, oh yes, and the history of paper towels, oh yes, it's very, very boring, right? But this game, it always keeps you interested and you're always rewarded for playing. You play a little bit of the story and you unlock a little bit more of the mystery. Then you go to a completely different setting, completely different point in time, completely different character's perspective, and then you learn more about the mystery, but it's so interesting. It constantly keeps you connected and it's never too much. Have a look at the text. It's not walls of text. It's small little chunks. It's very easy for anyone to access and enjoy. I really could not stop talking about how fantastic this game is for language learners in the way that the language is presented. Seriously, I don't know of a game that has better set up than this. There are some games that have chat logs and that's amazing, right? Uh, like for example, Persona 5, but even Persona 5 doesn't let you go back to absolutely any scene in the entire game and replay whenever you want. It doesn't have you think about the scenes and then analyze that language, further reinforcing the language. It doesn't have you going back in time and seeing it from different perspectives even more further. It's just constantly reinforcing, constantly keeping your attention, constantly making you interested. It's just perfect. The way this story is told, I wish more games were like this. I wish more stories were told in this way because it's so perfect for a language learner. Unfortunately, it's pretty hard to do this unless your game has time travel. Time travel is one of the biggest positives of this game for you as a language learner because it actually motivates you to go back, see things again, understand more, right? You might only understand a conversation, but you can go back and try again. Or maybe you didn't understand what's going on, but you can go back and retry. You can even do it from a different character's perspective, so it's not just doing the same thing over and over again. Not only that, but there's also the analysis section of all of the information that you've discovered, where well, you can go through that kind of like a Pokedex and go, ah, oh, ah, oh, and you can unravel more of the mystery. This game, you can 100% take at your own pace. And honestly, this really is one of the very best games for learning Japanese with. How do you get the game? Well, this game unfortunately is only released on PlayStation 4. This game was released in 2020 on the PlayStation 4 and the game was developed by Vanillaware and they don't have the best track record of having their products available on lots of different platforms. They usually only stick to like PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, uh, that type of thing. So it looks like that this game is only available on PlayStation 4. Now, this game sometimes can be a little bit expensive. Um, whenever I look at it on the Japanese store, it's usually around about 70 to 80 dollars and that's a lot. But it's worth it. It really is. If you can get this game on sale, boom, get it as soon as you can. But even not, it really is worth it, okay? Just have a look at all of the points that I've brought up. Just have a look at every, you know, positive about this game. And you can see how this could be so useful for a Japanese language learner. So, as you can see, it's a pretty amazing game, and honestly, this is one of my personal favourite games um, for playing. It really feels good to play, you always get a kind of, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, you want to kind of see a little bit more of the story, you want to see a little bit more of the characters, and you can mix it up whenever you want so you don't get bored. It's never boring, it's always changing, it's always interesting, you're always unravelling more of the mystery, and you're always learning and reinforcing the language uh, that you, you know, come across while playing. So I love this game. I really do. I think this game deserves way more attention that it's getting, especially in the language learning community. Don't let the sci-fi timey-wimey turn you off. 
Um, if you don't like the anime style, uh, maybe that might be a hurdle for you, but it's not too anime. I myself am not a huge, um, you know, current anime fan. Uh, I'm more like the retro, uh, more, you know, adult type stuff, but this is totally fine. There's never too much cringy anime stuff. It's really good. It really, 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 really is. I love this game. <laughs> so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, having a look at another really useful game for learning Japanese with. I absolutely love this game and I hope you guys do as well. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed and that is it for yet another Japanese game introduction. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's a pretty interesting game? I think it's really really cool. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are kind of interested in this game. Maybe it might fit you and your interests. What kind of games do you like? Please feel free to leave them in the comment section below of what kind of games you think are really interesting and useful uh, for learning Japanese with and who knows I might cover them uh, in a future episode. As always, a huge, enormous, shining love heart uh, to all of the supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your support. You really are um, keeping this channel going. And thank you, everyone, in the Game Gengo Discord community for all of your contributions uh, and having fun together, learning Japanese, chatting about video games and all kinds of stuff. Thank you so much uh, for all of your company and, and friendship. It's really great to kind of hang out with you guys and just chat and chill, especially when we can kind of you know, get together and play games. That's really fun. Yeah, I really like just chilling out and, you know, helping you guys learn Japanese and have fun together. So thank you so much everyone for all of your support of the channel. Thank you for all your comments. I will try and get through the comments. It, it, there's a lot of comments to go through um, and I do want to reply to everyone but it's just I'm so busy. <laughs> so hopefully I can manage to uh, get to you guys sometime in the future. So as always thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy learning Japanese and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.